Hello and welcome back to another episode of Why Would You Need This? The show where we look at things that rich people buy and ask, why would you need this? On today's episode... Uh, Whose house is this? Uh, that is just the guest house of this house. Why would you need this? Hi everyone, welcome back. So a while ago I made a video on Mega Mansions, the gigantic multi-million dollar mansions that are really unnecessary and just super ugly. And not only did I really enjoy making that video, but it also turns out that Mega Mansion tours are just this gold mine of excessive wealth YouTube content. And so today I thought I'd do what any responsible YouTuber would do and make another video on these houses. So this is Mega Mansions part two. Two Mansion, Two Mega. Now by far what I think is the best channel on YouTube for looking at these properties is Architectural Digest. The thing that I find funny about Architectural Digest is that the YouTube channel was clearly originally intended to just show off cool architecture around the world. But it seems somewhere along the way it stumbled onto a much more popular style of YouTube video, which is what I would call excessive wealth YouTube. So they just started making a ton of videos of these house tours of eight or nine figure mansions, some of which I thought we'd take a look at today. Welcome to Crescent House, located at 532 Neptune Avenue in beautiful, coastal Encinitas, California. So this is a $23 million house in Southern California, which is built on the beachfront. No, like, it's really built on the beachfront. In fact, the comment section of this video is just full of people pointing out the erosion on the cliffside, and just how close this house looks to falling into the sea. So we're now inside the beautiful courtyard, and in front of the pool for which the house is named. So welcome to the prison section of this house, built out of unpainted concrete slabs. Uh, $23 million, by the way. And we're fortunate today to have Wallace Cunningham, the visionary architectural designer. One of the things I've heard when I've heard you speak about this house is this gate. Can you tell us a little bit about the gate and the design of this courtyard? Yes, so basically I just wanted to make something that was absolutely horrendous. So another feature, Wally, that is so fascinating when I tour people through this house are the ramps. My feeling was that the house was designed for an older couple, so I wanted it barrier-free. I wanted people, regardless of all ages, to get where they wanted safely and effortlessly because this building is designed upside down. All of the principal day rooms are above. Yes, yeah, so this house was built with old people in mind. And that's exactly why I decided to put all of the most important rooms on the top floor. Just to add a bit more excitement to their day, you know? Everything in this house is also slanted in a weird direction. It kind of looks like one of those paintings by someone that clearly doesn't understand perspective. Or maybe it's just slanted because the house is already well on its way into the ocean. And additionally, here's a fun little detail about this place no walls. Well, not really. The walls don't touch the ceiling, so you better hope that the person on the other side of the house doesn't snore. And let's see, what else? Uh, oh yeah, the bathtub is a hole in the ground. The tub is part of the actual architecture, so it's easy access for grandchildren or anyone, so you can hold on to the counter. Easy steps. Yeah. Yeah, you know what would have been easier access, though? An actual bathtub. Again, this house is designed for an old couple. So, I mean, why not have stairs in the bathtub? What could possibly go wrong? Also, take your shoes off before standing in the bathtub, Wallace. Have some manners. Another thing that all of these houses have in common is they seem really fond of having these gigantic front doors. A lot of the more modern looking ones have these weird swivel doors, which considering most of the people that will occupy these places are really old, probably isn't the best idea. Although maybe that's why the house is so big, because once you're inside, you're probably not gonna be leaving. Watching the videos on this channel, you really get a sense for how the agents like to embellish the details of the house. One of my favorite mannerisms of these people though, is how they always describe particular items as anchoring the space, which is what they mean when something takes up a large part of the room and they just need to justify why it's there. You have these full slabs of green onyx marble throughout anchored by this fireplace. Behind me is a fireplace. Paul Williams was known for his fireplaces. Almost every room is anchored by one. A grand two-story Swarovski chandelier anchors the space. This table is quite large and anchors the entire room. The pile of clothes on my bedroom floor really anchors the space. 
So as we enter the backyard, we have this gorgeous vantage point of the backside of the home here. Paul Williams was coined as creating the Hollywood Regency style, which is really a confluence of Mediterranean, European, and Georgian colonial revival influences. Another thing that Architectural Digest likes to do on their channel is these celebrity house tours. Kind of similar to MTV Cribs in the 2000s, except instead of Mariah Carey or 50 Cent, it's David Dobrik. The style of the house is that it's like a house. Damn. Cool. No, I'm kidding. The channel does interview actual celebrities as well. Like, for example, this video with Blink-182 drummer Travis Barker. Hey, what's up, AD? I'm Travis Barker. We're in Calabasas, California. Welcome to my home. Courtney got me these way before we were together. We would spoil each other and buy each other Christmas presents and birthday presents. They've stayed in this room. She still has, like, a candle I got her, like, years ago that's still in her closet and, like, bags like she'll be like oh do you remember you got this for me like three christmases ago and i'm like whoa yeah man i mean keeping an item for three years is just crazy travis barker's house isn't actually that bad like sure it's a rich person mansion but as far as rich people mansions go it's fairly normal looking and actually does look like somebody lives there the thing that's funny about this video though is just seeing travis barker in a normal setting you know because he has this aggressive image of a punk rock drummer but in this video, he's just kind of murmuring about how the ornamental stones on his shelf help him feel at peace. It's a bit like seeing your teacher outside of school. What happened to you, Travis? You used to be so cool. The weirdest thing by far, though, is seeing how he acts around his wife, Kourtney Kardashian. <laughs> mm. Amy, what are you doing? Drinking this matcha that you made me, your famous matcha. I actually make the best matcha. Travis, you don't have to do this. If you're being coerced, just tell us. That's all you need to do. If you're being held hostage, Travis, just blink. Just blink 182 times. So I thought while we're at it, we'd check back in with another video tour with producer Michael, who showed up in my last video. It's a 22,000 square foot French chateau perched on the top of a mountain in Beverly Hills, overlooking the entire city, set on eight acres. It's just shy of 90 million bucks. It's $87 million, 22,000 square feet. It has eight bedrooms, 14 bathrooms, and a lot of other rooms that you guys have never seen before. So let's go take a look. Um, what? What sort of rooms haven't I seen before? Are these rooms legal, Michael? From watching these videos, I really get the impression that a lot of these LA homes are designed to only look good in pictures rather than actually have the functionality or the quality that you'd expect from spending this much money on a house. Like when you spend $70 million on a house that's designed in the style of a French chateau, you expect to be living basically in a French chateau, not some thinly veiled approximation of one. In fact, much like the back lots of Hollywood just down the road, these LA houses are designed only to look good on camera. And this is so apparent when these videos give us glimpses of the areas of the house we clearly weren't supposed to see. Like when you finally see them from above and you see the office building-like construction littered with AC units. Or like in several of these videos where you can still see construction going on just slightly out of view. Or like in this video where Michael is going to walk up the spiral staircase in the library and the banister is wobbling on him. Huge ceiling, I love the wood. What is that? 25 feet? It's gotta yes. be, right? Uh, I think it's even more, actually. It might be. And the um, spiral staircase to but, get up there. By the way, Michael, you should go up there. It's actually kind of fun. I don't like spiral staircases. Really? Shall I go up? Go you on. should go All up. Right, you go should up. go up. I don't just, like spiral staircases. Let me put my sunglasses on. It looks very sturdy. As you put on your glasses. <laughs> $87 million. Also, I like how there are people hovering around in the background trying not to be seen. Again, these videos are just for show. Look yeah. at this. I don't know what to call it, but it's magnificent. Alcohol. You have a secondary. Oh, wow. Look at this. Go on, give us a dance. And now we come to my favorite house that I wanted to show you. So if you watched my last video, you might remember that the producer Michael video that I covered was a tour of The One the insane $500 million giga mansion built by the equally insane Niall Niami. An update on that house, by the way, it finally sold at auction in March 
for $141 million, which is a long way off the original asking price. And honestly, considering the troubled history of that house, maybe the best thing for the new owner to do is to just knock it down and sell the massive amount of land it sits on to a new developer. But luckily for us, it just so happens that there is another Nile Niami video on producer Michael's channel. And this time, it's a tour of his own house. Niall's house is exactly what you'd expect, a scaled down version of the one, with the same sort of black, white and grey colour scheme. Complete with really odd features all over the place, like this indoor herb garden, to grow... herbs. That's art. It's a swimming oh, pool, yeah. That's yeah. really cool. That is really neat. The art in here is amazing. Yeah, just amazing. In fact, some of my favourite features include the oversized pills, naked Barbie, uh, the chain, and Picasso's impression of a bowling ball. Incredible. And a glass bottom. I, I, I didn't realise it was glass until you just pointed yeah. it out. I just thought it was water. Yeah. But yeah, there is another pool and I see a kitchen down there. Yeah, kitchen. And I think I see... Is that... Is that a body at the bottom of the pool? The main floors of Nile's house are fairly typical ultra-modern Mega Mansion stuff. It's pretty interesting getting to see a mansion that's actually lived in, but what's even more interesting is how it doesn't actually look all that different from the other show mansions. There seem to be a significant lack of personal items in Nile's house, which maybe means he just keeps the place really tidy, but I think the more likely scenario is that he only uses one or two rooms in the house and the rest are just for show. The lower floor of the mansion, however, is where things get really interesting. First off, we have Niall's sensory deprivation tank, which we can only assume is where he hides the bodies of all those people who asked for their money back after investing in the one. But that's not the craziest part of this floor, because he also has this room that he calls the Red Room, which is only accessible behind a hidden door, and he refuses uses to let the camera see inside. So yeah, that sounds normal, no problems there. Uh, anyway, how about that sensory deprivation tank? Can we show that? Yeah, why not? I don't know if we can show that, can we? Uh, Can't show be dazzled. It's yeah, a toy, we right? It's we a could. toy. Yeah. Uh, some are real, I don't know, but you can't, they're not usable, obviously. Some are real? Some are real. So does that mean when people come to collect the millions in debt that he owes, does he just break the glass and pull out a diamond encrusted AK to fight them off? The more I find out about Niall, the more he seems like just a super villain, and I love it. Some of these AKs are real, Mr. Bond. Your task is to find the correct one to break out of the red room and save Miss Moneypenny from drowning in the sensory deprivation tank. I'll be upstairs watching TV. You know, Niall is very quickly becoming my favourite character in the cinematic universe of my YouTube channel. Maybe one day I'll make a video entirely on him. Lastly, I wanted to show you this part of the house called the Wellness Centre. That's so This cool. is incredible. Any lights in here so we can yeah. light it up? Yeah. So are these uh, infrared heat yeah. lamps? Infrared lamps. Ah, uh, yes. The weed room. A handful of the YouTube comments on these videos point out something that makes a lot of sense, which is that if you had a hundred million dollars to spend on one of these houses, why wouldn't you just hire somebody to design a house for you and build that, instead of spending it on one of these prefabs? But to be honest, maybe the type of person that would do that isn't the target audience for one of these houses. In my last video, I spoke a bit about the disposability of these houses, which is where I think a lot of them are designed to just be lived in for maybe half the year for three or four years before moving on to something else. And then someone will buy the property, tear the house down and build something to fit the current trend. And so for these sorts of people, it doesn't really matter that the bathtub's a hole in the ground, or the staircase is wobbly, or someone's been trapped in the red room for three weeks and they can't get out. Because they don't really use these places that much to care about these things. The other thing I concluded from my last video is that so many of those properties just remain completely empty. And I can prove that because in the six months since I made that video, so many of those listings are still there. And in fact, some of those listings were around for several months before I made that video. But that was another quick look at yet more ridiculous California mega mansions. It was a really fun topic to explore some more of, and I really hope you enjoyed hearing me delve back into it. If you have any ideas for something you'd like to hear me cover next, please let me know. Other than that, if you're new here, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.